And what Robert does in his show is hilarious. He has a, a deck of jumbo cards that he says he comes out, you know, first of all, he shows up wearing a mask and wearing gloves. And then he, everybody's 20 feet apart, 20 feet from him. And there's a table in the middle at 10 feet where people can come up and put place things or pick up things. But he's got this jumbo deck <clears throat> that he says is each card has been individually sanitized for your protection. And then the deck is in the box and the box is in a Ziploc bag. And then he puts that with a bottle of hand sanitizer in the bucket and then extends the pole out. It's hilarious. I mean, it's hilarious. So yeah, you can really, you can do some really interesting things. Card to impossible location. You know, you borrow, <clears throat> you borrow a bill, tear it in half, have them keep half. And then the other half ends up laminated in, in plastic. It's a great trick. You know, that's plastic cash from Dan Garrett from 1977. Right. You know, um, so there's a, there's a lot of things that you can do, but there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of stuff that you can do where people make choices. Look at Ricky Jay's show. You know, he did everywhere and nowhere and nobody touched the cards except him. He said, you know, tell me when to stop. And he showed the card, you know? So all that practice for the, you know, the Ovette master move, <laughs> You know, or the uh, uh, the um, KM move, or whatever your control, you can do, or your or your calls. You know, you're farther away from the audience. You can get away with murder, right? You can have somebody think of a card and show that it was that that, that, that their card is a different back, and you can do it with uh, a double a Phoenix double decker deck where one half is blue of the one deck is blue and one deck is red. I mean, because nobody's going to examine the cards. So, I mean, you can, yeah, I mean, you can do whatever. I would use Phoenix parlor cards or jumbo cards because you're further away. But you can do bigger stuff. You can do a hat coil. You can do productions. It's fine. Yeah, I mean, I, I remember at Magic Fest uh, walking, you know, past the, I think it was the Card of Monday table or something, uh, whoever was there with cards. And I just said, I looked at the Phoenix parlor cards and I go, what would I do with these? You know, they're not quite jumbo. They're not quite right. And now you, I mean, you, oh, I use them. You've given me the it's perfect. The only use thing case. I use, they're the only thing I use in my parlor shows because the Phoenix parlor cards, their in, indices are the same size as a bicycle jumbo index. Except, but the cards themselves are just about twice the size of a regular deck of cards. It's like two decks side by side. And that's the length of it. They're actually, and of course I got these giant, you know, Johnny Thompson, Charles Bertram, mitts okay so maybe it's a little easier for me but a phoenix parlor deck is not hard to handle you can still shuffle them you can still cut them they're perfectly fine they're a little bigger but they're perfectly easy to handle um i don't have to palm them but they're really visible and so i there's a lot of things you can do there's a lot of things you can do if you're doing a tossed out deck get a deck sealer seal the deck I mean, there's a, there's a lot of stuff you can do. Uh, I do a card stab where the, we start with a sealed deck in the audience. If they open it, they shuffle it. And then I don't touch the cards again until I'm you know, blindfolded. And I'm being blindfolded while they're shuffling the deck. It's very strong. So, I mean, yeah, just think of, <clears throat> just think of ways that you can, you know, you can do that. But again, there's a lot of display tricks that do in, audience involvement does not, and you can do this on Zoom too. You can have audience involvement without them touching anything. You can have them point at things. You can have them say a magic word. You can have them make a magic gesture. You can have them make choices. Uh, Larry Haas actually came up with a, a paper that he wrote. There's 14 different ways to do audience involvement online. I'm not going to read it to you because I paid good money for that class. Uh, and which reminds me, again, Jeff McBride, who's got more experience in this than anybody on the planet. He's got all the best people. And they just did um, a Zoom class, three weeks. And they're doing all their classes online now, which means the prices have dropped to like 150 bucks, 300 bucks. It's fantastic. I just did, I did two classes with them and I'm doing another one starting today. Uh, I did a class on shifting gears in your business with Tobias Beckwith, Jeff's manager. That was $145, and it was based on his book, of Beyond Applause, which I highly recommend. And that was three Wednesday nights for two hours, 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern, 
5 to 7 p.m. Pacific on Zoom, three two-hour sessions, and, the, and they give you all these other resources and links to free video downloads. You're getting $1,000 worth of material with every one of these classes. It's unbelievable. The second one I did, which ended last week, was the first class they did on Zoom, how to do magic, you know, uh, focus on Zoom, it was called. And the first class was on hardware and software and your setup. The second class was on how, what kind of material to do. And the third class was how to market your shows. It's great stuff. If they do that class again, take it. I'm serious. Why, why reinvent the wheel? You know, be smart. Learn from other people's mistakes. And then today, I'm starting a two-day class. It's three hours, two, two sessions of three hours each, Saturday and Sunday, which is Mentalism That Works Online with Ross, with Ross Johnson and Heim Goldberg and Jeff and Larry Haas and a few other people. And because I'm learning all this stuff, I'm going to be miles ahead of most of the other people. I'm telling you, this knowledge is out there. It's available. Use this time to build your knowledge and work on this. And yes, I would not only be working on your Zoom material, or live material, material you can do on video, but I was also, there's, there's three different things here. There's video material, there's live on Zoom material, and then there's the material you're going to do once you go live again. And you're right, we are going to have to moderate our shows and modify our shows. So now is the time to do that preparation and thinking in advance. Now we have a gift here. We have time to prepare for the changes that are, that are in place that are coming. So take it, let's take advantage of it. Let's use this time wisely. Well, I think that's what's really great about you is that, I mean, it's so clear that you are using you uh, because this time could end any, you know, any time. And uh, obviously we, in a way we want it to end. We want people to stop getting sick and things like that. But I, I, you, and I think, you know, me too, even when it comes to just, you know, learning how to use this microphone in front of me better. I don't want to, I don't want things to get back to normal and say, wow, I, I didn't use that time to learn anything. So absolutely, um, it's, it's very, uh, you know, very inspirational to hear you. Like you are not stopping at all. You have turned you up. Can gas, Look, you, you can do this. You know, there is nobody, if you're, if you can hear my voice, if you're listening to this, you can do this. Trust me, you can do this. If I can do it, you can do it. Believe me, I am not the most I'm not the most capable guy with this stuff. Uh, so, yeah, it, believe me, this is available to everybody. I was talking with a friend of mine recently who was very discouraged and very basically, maybe I'm just going to get out of magic because I'm not going to make any money. You know, this is everything's going to be messed up from now on. No, 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 no. There's an opportunity here. People need. See, you got to understand, entertainment is not frivolous. People need entertainment. We'll go nuts without entertainment. We need art and ornament in our life. You lock up a guy in a cell with no decorations, he's going to find patterns in the cracks of the ceiling. I mean, that's just the way we're built. Man is the animal that needs, that, that, that defines patterns, and, and we need those kind of diversions. Otherwise, real life gets, becomes a burden and becomes unbearable. And especially now, with all the stuff that's going on, think about all the stuff that's going on. We've, we've got COVID-19, we've got the economy in the worst recession in all, almost 100 years. We've got, you know, politics is insane. We've got people protesting in the streets. Um, we've got some people who are being very violent. There are some people who are being professionally violent. This is not a great time in a lot of ways. So, you know, people need what we have to offer. They need lightness. And yes, we can do something. I'm working on a routine right now that's going to talk about the current political situation, but I'm going to do it in a way that's going to leave people inspired and uplifted, not discouraged. Okay, that's what art can do. As Pablo Picasso famously said, art is the beautiful lie that tells the truth. And we can still have meaning in our magic without being too heavy, without being preachy. We can still do all of that. Um, I would only do one of those routines in a show, maybe. Uh, but we can, but we definitely need to start magic first, open with the magic, do something flashy. Uh, one of my openings, I have two half dollars and I balance them on edge, one on top of the other. And I talk about, this is how I balance my budget. And then at the top, when I spin, I say, so, and I can go around the world without too much money, just like that. That's a real, and that's up close to the camera right there. And then I take them apart, show them on both sides. And now I've, now they've seen some magic. 
Now I, that's the appetizer. I've whetted their appetite. Oh, they want to see what's next. Remember, the rules of showmanship still apply. Max Maven's big three, right? You got five seconds. So he said 30 seconds. I think now it's closer to five seconds in this internet gener uh, Instagram generation. You got five seconds to answer the question. Who is this guy? What's he doing? And why should I care? Who is this? Who is this woman? What is she doing? And why should I care? And so magic first, you start with the magic. Make your scripts shorter. Don't be too long winded. Keep it visual. Okay. You want more magic per minute. And the shows on Zoom are going to be shorter. They're running about 20 to 30 minutes. I know people who are, some people are doing an hour. That's tough because people can't sit there and watch video that long. I mean, there are people who can't even watch YouTube videos for 30 seconds. So, you know, so I would say a 20 to 30 minute show. I know one performer who's getting $250 for a 30 minute birthday show on Zoom. And he's doing four or five of those a day. And he's got a Patreon account where people are donating money so that he can do free shows for Title I schools, for the kids from Title I schools in poor areas. It's brilliant. And he's also done some corporate stuff in the meantime. Corporations love to save money, and I think a lot of corporate entertainment is going to be on Zoom. How would you like to be able to do three keynotes a day? Marco Tempest did three keynotes on three different continents in the same day. I mean, this is just miraculous. So, yeah, absolutely. Take advantage of it. Like I say, there's all this magic that we can't, real close-up magic that we can't do on stage. And then we can't do table hopping because we don't can't carry it in our pockets. I mean, how great does Dean's box look on camera? It's brilliant. Okay, so get, get out your favorite magic and say, I'm going to do the stuff that I really love. And I'm going to figure out, I'm going to try it on camera, see how it looks, and make it work on camera. And some of it's going to work and some of it won't. That's okay. That's perfectly okay. The other thing is, Zoom is a very intimate medium. So it's okay to be yourself. People want to know. I remember I did a long time ago, I did a, a Red Hat Ladies Society lunch, and those are fantastic. Those, that's a great audience. Women of a certain age who are just getting together to have a good time, one of the best audiences in the world for magic and mind reading. And um, I had a secret weapon. A friend, of, a friend of mine who's a red hat lady was also a student of mine, a uh, magician. And she had gotten me the gig. So she went with me uh, to the gig. And then after the show, she stationed herself. She camped out in the ladies' room in one of the stalls and listened to what people said. Boy, do I recommend this. If you've got a female assistant or friend that can help you with this, let them camp out after the show or during the intermission. Listen to what people are saying. And what people said is, I really like the magic, but I wish I could learn more about him. I, I'd like to know more about him. How did he get started? What's, what's his story? People are interested in us. Don't make it all about you, but you can share some stories from your life. One of my routines talks about, my Miser's Dream routine talks about the first magic show I ever saw live when I was a school kid and what inspired me to become a magician. People love that stuff. And again, I wouldn't make the whole show about it necessarily unless you're going to do a one-man show like Bobby Torkova does so well in New York City. He's a, an incredible genius who does brilliant classical magic. And if you ever get a chance to see Bobby Torkova's show, please don't, uh, don't hesitate. Don't miss it because he is one of the best of the best. So you can make it all about you, but I think on Zoom, not so much. I think on Zoom, it's got to be interactive and participatory. So really, yes, there are things that we can do on Zoom that we can do in person. But I, that doesn't mean we have to sacrifice anything necessarily. And there are things that we can do on Zoom that we can't do live that I think more than make up for it. So I don't think it's better or worse. It's just different, different flavor. It's like, is chocolate better than vanilla? Well, you know, it depends on what you like. Um, so there you go. So, that, I mean, that's that's kind of... I know that I, you know, I know I'm very long winded. Uh, my friends joke that I can't even clear my throat in 30 minutes, but <laughs> that's really what I wanted to say. Well, I mean, it, it, I appreciate you sharing all of it. I mean, it's, it's fantastic information. And we did talk before the episode started uh, because your claim is that you have uh, maybe an anecdote or two from your many years of knowing Eugene Berger. And, uh, I, you know, I'd, I'd love to 
I'd love to hear one of those stories. I only met Eugene once about 30 years ago, and uh, we had uh, we were just were at a restaurant at a hotel. <clears throat> at